Greetings, everybody. My name is Lazarus Moises. I'm from the Laboratory of Nonlinear Systems, Circuits and Complexity of the Physics Department on Aristotle University of Thessaloniki in Greece. And the topic of our presentation is introducing chaos and chaos based encryption applications to university students. So, in this presentation, uh, first I'm going to discuss about the motivation behind. Uh, that seminar uh, that we conducted. And then I will talk about the seminar syllabus and discuss what are our future plans uh, for reruns of the seminar. Uh, now, first of all, chaos, uh, a very big topic, a uh, very large scientific, scientific field. It's been around for around uh, 60 years. Uh, it covers, of course, a lot of uh, modeling of physical and uh, human made systems in physics, in engineering in biology, economics, and many, many more. Uh, so a big aspect of chaos is uh, the modeling of physical systems. But also a secondary uh, topic where chaos theory is applied is uh, you know, a very large uh, number of applications. For example, uh, pseudo-random bit generators, encryption, uh, communications, optimization, exploration, surveillance, I mean, many, many more. So, you know, overall chaos theory uh, in the modeling and in the application aspect uh, is a very, very big area with very active research at the moment. So uh, regarding the introduction to chaos, so far all around uh, the world, there have been many uh, seminars in order to introduce chaos theory. Uh, First of all, to secondary students and high school students, uh, but also at university students. Uh, so there are many trials and uh, you know actions taken to introduce chaos on uh, different levels of education. Now the thing is, in most of the seminars from our literature review, uh, we saw that for the most part, I mean, almost 95%, uh, the seminars focused on the, you know introducing chaotic systems. Uh, as a physical tool, uh, you know, for physical modeling, like, uh, you know, inverted pendulums, for example. And uh, almost none of them focused on the applications of chaotic systems that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so, you know, of course, nonlinear dynamics and chaos as a topic already exists in undergraduate courses, for example, in some departments, uh, mostly physics departments. Uh, but again, it focuses on the physical modeling of chaos. So despite being such a huge topic, uh, chaos theory, you know, uh, in its applications aspect uh, has not really been uh, thoroughly introduced in undergraduate or even younger uh, levels of education. And that was, uh, you know, our motivation because uh, behind the seminar that we conduct. Uh, so, you know, the lack of uh, proper introduction to the numerous applications of chaos and especially in encryption and security that we wanted to focus. So based on this uh, lag, we motivated ourselves uh, to design a seminar that was about to introduce uh, students to various uh, state-of-the-art topics connecting to chaos theory and its applications in encryption and security. Uh, so we, have, we wanted to share various ideas and research topics on those fields. So based on that, we designed the seminar. Uh, it was conducted on the Department of Computer Aided Design on St. Petersburg. Electrotechnical University in Russia. It was conducted last year, so from November to December of 2021. In the seminar, uh, of course, it wasn't mandatory, it was optional for students. It consisted of eight lectures, two hours for each lecture. So overall, uh, we had uh, 16 hours of the seminar. And the seminar was conducted uh, virtually, uh, of course, because I, I wasn't living in Russia at the time. And we wanted to, you know, uh, promote it to various students from various departments. So we shared it through the university website and through social media. So uh, the seminar, uh, you know, covered various aspects of chaotic systems and their applications. And, you know, we tried to cover a very wide area and within uh, each lecture, we ended up with a discussion of various uh, state-of-the-art topics. So, you know, our idea was to introduce students to various applications and also uh, give them some ideas for future, uh, you know, for future papers and from for future research topics. So, 
you know, on our first lecture, we started with a general introduction to chaos theory. Uh, we assumed that the audience was not familiar with chaos, so we introduced the basic ideas in discrete time and the basic tools of nonlinear analysis, like bifurcation diagrams, Lyapunov exponents, you know, phase diagrams, cobweb diagrams. And of course, we discussed some more uh, special phenomena like anti-monotonicity, for example. And then we moved on to the second lecture by discussing continuous time. So again, we talked about phase diagrams and the Poincaré section in order, which is used to, you know, design the bifurcation diagram. But again, we finished up the lecture with a discussion on trending topics, for example, coexisting attractors, which are very uh, recent and uh, highly active in uh, the research areas. And then we moved on uh, to the applications in the second lecture. We discussed an application relevant to security, which is a chaotic area exploration. This is an application that is used uh, mainly for security, but in applications like uh, exploration and firefighting. Uh, for example. So we discussed various topics of research like, uh, you know, the study of the performance uh, of chaotic exploration, the use of multiple robots, and trending topics like the actual physical implementation. But then on the second, uh, on our third lecture, we talked about a relevant topic, which is chaotic surveillance. Uh, we talked about the use of UAVs with chaotic cameras and uh, this application is useful in adversarial situations uh, for example when you want to surveil an area against various adversaries that want to advance inside this area uh, so we discussed uh, trending topics like the efficiency of the technique uh, the difficulty in implementation the use of of the self products that someone may use to um, utilize and you know implement uh, this chaotic surveillance technique then on the second part of the lecture, we start to get a bit more into the encryption applications. So we discussed random bit generators. Of course, these are the basis of a plethora of applications in encryption and optimization as well. For example, so we discussed different techniques, uh, you know, in order to generate bits or generate integers. Of course, we talked about computational efficiency of those techniques, which is, of course, a very uh, important topic in the literature. And based on that, we moved on uh, to a similar application like the security requirements, uh, because in encryption, uh, the PRPGs need to satisfy specific requirements like statistical randomness, uh, good key space, the sensitivity, and of course, as we said, computational efficiency. We showcased uh, all of those uh, uh, you know, requirements to a simple application of the password generator. This is something we have been working on. It's a simple a GUI that uses a PRBG, a bit generator, uh, to generate random uh, secure passwords. And then we moved on to the main uh, to lecture uh, five, where we discussed text and image encryption. Uh, so here, of course, a very interesting topic, very trending in chaos theory. So we discussed about the different chaos-based uh, encryption uh, designs. Of course, this can be used in uh, text encryption or in image encryption. And for all of our uh, lectures, of course, we try to keep it very, very visual with all of our uh, syllabus. So we gave the students many figures illustrative uh, of what we were trying to achieve. So here, for example, in image encryption, we discussed various statistical measures like uh, sensitivity, uh, histogram analysis, pixel correlation, entropy, and resistance to cropping and noise attacks to give them an understanding of what we are trying to achieve through chaos based encryption. And um, they were very interesting, especially for this lecture. And then on lecture six, we discussed about chaos control and chaos synchronization. Uh, again, a topic through which we can achieve secure communications. Uh, so we discussed about the basics of feedback control, observer design, and how these control architectures can be used in signal masking, uh, either through synchronization or through adaptive control as well. And we finished up with a discussion on trending topics like the various types of synchronization that they exist and how we can use them to our advantage. Then on lecture six, uh, we discussed about constructing new chaotic maps. You know, in encryption and chaos based encryption, usually we don't use available maps, but we use uh, new maps that we construct ourselves. So we told the students what are the basic techniques that can be used 
to construct novel maps. And of course, we try to generalize uh, this technique by discussing what is mainly called in the literature as notification, uh, which is the process of constructing uh, techniques that work on any possible map and can be used holistically to create new maps. Again, it is a very uh, trending topic of study at the moment. Finally, on lecture six, we discussed about nonlinear system identification. Mainly, we talked about the Cindy approach. Uh, this technique, of course, has various applications uh, in identifying nonlinear dynamics. And, uh, you know, it can also be used uh, in order to unmask secure communications. So we tried to close the uh, lectures by giving, uh, you know, a technique that could be potentially used to break a secure communication. But of course, this topic has numerous applications that are uh, very recent, like application to coexisting attractors in continuous and in discrete time uh, systems as well. Uh, so this was the last uh, lecture that we presented. And so we had a plethora of different uh, topics in mind. And that was our approach uh, to give the students a collection of different topics relating to security and chaos theory and encryption so they can pick up different research topics in the future for themselves. Uh, so regarding the feedback uh, from the students, uh, we had the participation of 11 uh, people overall. Doesn't sound much, but for this sort of uh, specialized uh, seminar, I think it's a very good number uh, from three different universities uh, in St. Petersburg, in Aristotle University and Hellenic University, International Hellenic University. Uh, so overall, the feedback was very well. Of course, we had a very specialized audience. We had mainly PhD students and master students. Uh, most of them believed that uh, the course was a very appropriate uh, in its length. And overall, they found it uh, very interesting, which was our initial goal, of course. And when asked, for example, if they thought this course would help them become better researchers and you know obtain new ideas, again, they were very positive. And more importantly, they would recommend the course to colleagues. Uh, so, you know, overall, the audience was very uh, much, uh, you know, appreciative of the seminar, which gives us a very positive feedback to continue and uh, redo the seminar uh, in uh, the upcoming years. So, what, you know, our end goal is to actually replicate the seminar and maybe do it as a yearly thing and do it uh, each year as well. Uh, but for this, we have set specific goals. Uh, so, for example, we want to attract more people. So in future reruns, we will try to have a wider spread the, through social media uh, to draw more people to the seminar. Secondary, we were thinking of you know enhancing the syllabus with many different topics like uh, you know hidden attractors, uh, fractional order systems, maybe quantum systems, quantum chaotic systems, a very uh, state of the art topic, and maybe consider different applications like uh, chaos based optimization or possibly circuit implementations of these designs. And uh, one other idea that we have for future reruns is to possibly uh, you know, in, invite new collaborative researchers to deliver talks on the seminar. Uh, the seminar, by the way, was delivered by myself. So in the future, we may have more people contributing to it. And one final thought that we have is possibly to you know, adapt the seminar to a workshop. So you know, instead of having uh, lectures, maybe we can have some sort of uh, groups of graduate students working together uh, with some end goal uh, deliveries. So we can end up this, the workshop uh, with uh, some sort of small poster presentations and, you know, anyway, give the students something to work on uh, hands on so they can obtain a better experience uh, from the whole uh, seminar. So many new topics for the future. I I'm hope, you know, I really hope that we can redo the seminar this year on the next year as well. Uh, I hope that the situation will allow us to do so. So thank you all for your time. I will uh, thank you for your attention and I will see you all on the Q&A section.